The cool part about papaya that most people don't know is they're hollow. Because if you have a living soil, it works for you and not against you. In about 10 to 15 years, this place will be self-sustaining. We have flowers that are just opening up. The reality is this tree could be worth about 8,000 once it starts fruiting. This one right here tastes like brown sugar and pears. Most people would probably look at it as landscaping. <laughs> our biggest goal is to try to produce our own food. You can see right here, we have little bananas. Our three main things that we do in this yard is we mulch, we compost, and we use compost tea. My name is Justin Haddad, and I'm a permaculture designer. Ah, those butterflies. Once you walk through our back gate and you kind of walk into it, you start heading underneath the trellis, it starts feeling five to 10 degrees cooler. There's a lot of shade now everywhere. The ground feels a lot cooler. You can definitely breathe better when you're back here than when you're out in the city. Some of these trees are actually known to produce high amounts of oxygen. So when you're around them, you're feeling better. You have more endorphins flowing through you. Yeah, it's pretty epic. When you, you can definitely feel a difference when you walk in. So we've been really working hard on building the microbial life and the biomass. We've been doing this again for about seven years. And since we've been doing it, we've seen a huge change in our soil quality. And actually, if you start digging down, into this ground here. First, you start kind of getting into a nice fine mulch. The whole goal of putting mulch down is not just to create humus, it's also to uh, create insulation for the trees. We start getting into what we could call compost or even call it humus. This stuff right here is really what you're looking for. Once you have this in your yard, your yard is happy. I mean, there's so much microbial life. There's mycelium spread all through it. Mycelium is very important for nature. Anywhere you go where there's a lot of trees and mulch around, you're gonna find mycelium. There's two different forms of mycelium, one that forms into the root and one that wraps around the root. Uh, both of them are providing food for a lot of these plants and makes it necessary for them to grow sustainably without any human contact. This is actually fresh mycelium. It's, it's really white and then you can see when it overtakes a medium, it really uh, fills it in with what looks like spider webs. We don't actually have uh, much to show right now on the ground because it's still cold, uh, but during the summertime, a lot of it starts really showing. Our three main things that we do in this yard is we mulch, we compost, and we use compost tea. Those three things will get you where you want to be anywhere uh, in the world. So not only do water features make such a beautiful sound to enjoy, they also provide a lot of beneficial outcomes to permaculture. It can irrigate plants that require consistent watering. It, it attracts a lot of different types of beneficials like your bees and your hummingbirds and uh, different types of birds in general. It also creates different types of microbial life. So you can actually use this water to fertilize your trees around the property and uh, watch your hummingbirds take baths every morning. It's pretty beautiful. So this property is actually my father's home. He's owned it for about 30 years now. This whole place was rock. It wasn't really enjoyable. And there wasn't much fruit growing, just the orange tree and olive tree that we have on the property. We started realizing, you know, we wanted to grow our own food. And the only way to do that was to do it in our backyard because we don't have a large uh, farm space. So right here is nasturtium. This flower right here is edible, it tastes like black pepper. This is like a speckled, speckled Roman lettuce. And then we have fresh cilantro. So right here is a lettuce going to seed. There's some beautiful flowers. The bees come to this too. This is a more subtropical tree right here. This is your silk floss tree. Some people consider us a desert. We are able to produce though these subtropical trees as long as we have the right microclimate set up. It's still young right now, but these will get you know, 20 feet, 30 feet tall. Over here we have rosemary. It's a great ornamental plant to have, but then on top of that, 
you can use it for edible purposes. And what microclimates are, just basically uh, small groupings of area that are designated for certain types of plants. And that way you can be able to bring in different types of tropicals and areas that are considered desert, like where we live. This is called Okinawa spinach. This is from Japan. This spreads really well as a ground cover, as well as it has a great taste. So we really worked hard into this and uh, put up pretty much all of our heart and soul, blood and tears, just to make this all happen. And we have this nitrogen fixer right here, known as ice cream bean. This is a subtropical fruit. Cool plant to have. Also, when I say nitrogen fixer, I'm referring to its roots have these nodules on them. So every time you cut a branch, it releases uh, one of those nodules, and those nodules have nitrogen. And that nitrogen will then spread into the soil. Overall, if there's too much nitrogen and it doesn't need all of it, it'll give it off to the rest of the plants because it'll just sit there in the soil and then it's up for grabs for anyone. Also, a lot of plants like to work together. Uh, there are companion plants. One that's very common known as the three sisters, which is squash, corn, and beans. They work really well together. One provides nitrogen, the other one grows tall for the beans to grow on, and then there's squash that grows on the ground and covers and shades it and cools it down and provides a lot of fruit. Now we, uh, we space our peaches out about a hand's length. If you keep them too close like this, what happens is they don't get too large, they push into each other. One might fall off anyway, and then you won't get really good production. So right here, what we'll do is we'll actually take off all four of these those are gone, and that branch will hold four nice, large, juicy peaches for us to enjoy. When I mention uh, planting tomatoes, I always mention you want to plant them deeper than the soil they were brought in, so at least two, three inches deeper than what the soil they were brought in. This will help uh, expose the base of the tr uh, tomato plant into root, and it will make a nice, beefier tomato plant. So you could definitely taste the difference between eating something homegrown versus eating something uh, store-bought. For instance, carrots, they are a lot sweeter when you grow them yourself. Uh, when they're from a grocery store, they taste like a carrot, but there's like no sweetness. Or when you eat a tomato, it really tastes like a fruit and not a vegetable like you would assume it is. Some tips with tomatoes, prune the bottom, bury them deep, and then you wanna top them in the very beginning so that they can create two growths instead of one. I don't want these to grow high and ride poles like a lot of people do. I want these to stay low to the ground. This is where I seem to get the best production. Another great part about growing food on your own and knowing where it's coming from is that you're growing within the season. So a lot of times you go into a grocery store and you find apples all year round. Apples don't grow all year round. You typically find them around July and August and then apples are gone. And if you didn't preserve them properly, you won't have any more apples for the rest of the year. So we juice all of our oranges and lemons and we keep them in ice cubes that we will save for the years and we'll open up these ice cube bags whenever we want uh, lemon or orange. We're really used to eating what we see in a grocery store and not realizing what it has to do to stay on those shelves for that long. You know, a lot of things are put into different types of rooms, sprayed with different chemicals, or given, uh, put in oxygen chambers to stay fresh longer. So if you could grow your own food, you have even the slightest, smallest amount of space, even a balcony space, you can grow something, you can consume something and better benefit yourself from consuming really harmful sprays like insecticides, herbicides, and uh, pesticides. And you know, you can try to wash this stuff off, but if it's uh, in the skin, you're not really gonna get it out. This papaya tree uh, is a pretty interesting story. This one, I started from seed. It grew to about uh, one foot tall, and then I planted it in the ground right next to this guava tree. And you can see they've grown together symbiotically, and they've done really well. When growing fruit trees, it could be really rewarding. You know, some don't take as long. We have like papaya that, you know, we get fruit within one year and we start harvesting and that's exciting. You know, that's really exciting. The fruit were getting eaten by bats. So we had to start picking them. We get, you know, we get a nice 12 foot ladder. We get up there and we have a, you know, a knife and we just have to cut the, the uh, papaya off ever so slightly. Uh, really tasty fruit. The cool part about papaya that most people don't know is they're hollow. But then when we have things like a mango that we grew from seed and it's flowering for us and it's holding its flowers and it has a lot of 
fruit production that it wants to produce. Right here we have a beautiful manila mango tree. Still hasn't fruited for us yet. Awesome thing is you can still use the leaves for tea even if you still don't have the fruit yet. Let's say you planted a mango from seed and it produced fruit. Now if you took that fruit and you started new batches of, of trees, those are second generation trees. Those have adapted better to your climate at that point. So each seed is really its own genetic and it's really unique how you can start creating uh, your own byproduct from what you started with and you end up with seed Z that is completely different after a 20 year span or 26 year span. So definitely try to produce your own food and then produce food from the seeds that came from the food that you ate. <laughs> so there's a, there's a quote that said, uh, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the next best time is today. Because if you keep waiting another day to plant a tree, you're gonna have to wait another day to see some fruit. And some of these plants might take anywhere from three years to 10 years to produce something for you. Especially if you're doing things from seed. What brings me joy is being able to provide food for other people, not just myself. So really seeing the smile on other people's face when they take a bite of something that just grew from my yard or grew from their yard. But for me, it really is just growing food for not just myself, but for everyone around me.